such a community and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me light and up till today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened my chest and he filled it with the nur of Islam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Ibrahim. Uh, I was born in the south coast of Mzinto. Uh, I grew up uh, in the Christian family. But the way they practicing is, is uh, Christianity. Uh, no, I wasn't sure if they are doing the right thing. Then uh, in 1998, I joined the Universal Church of Kingdom of God. They got a cathedral here in the corner of a Smith and a Pro Street. So I joined them. Then I said, no, this is the right Christianity now I'm following. But uh, the way of the bishop, the way he was explaining the purpose of doing a course to become a priest, now he's in, uh, he's in Stockholm now. Is a senate, is a senator there. So the way he was explaining Islam, yeah, he was explaining Christianity. I said, no, Christianity is a wrong religion. Then I became to do a research, what is Islam? Then I came to IPCI, downstairs they had a TV there, where you sit and watch Sheikh Ahmad that DVD, that uh, video cassettes, that time there were no DVD. So I met a brother there called Abdul Khalik. I explained to him. He asked me to come here fourth floor. And I remember at the reception, there was a sister called Zinat. I'm not sure where she is now. So they gave me some books. Then for about six months, I was reading these books. Then after that, I embraced Islam. My name is Ibrahim. Alhamdulillah, Allah is giving me a lot of things. Problems come also. But you must remember, if any problem come, you, it, it, a problem come in two ways. It's either you are punished, then when a problem come, you must check how you perform your salah. If it's Ramadan, now you fast. Then you know that, no, here I'm getting punished. But if you know that oh, if it, all these things are straight, then you must know that Allah wants to teach you something. Then you mustn't give up. Alhamdulillah, many things are happening. I went for hard and all that, but by work, I'm working here at the IPCI. I do mostly conversions, and I'm giving talks. Jazala khair, enjoy your course. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. My name is Hamdan bin Abdul Muhsin, original from Malaysia. And alhamdulillah, uh, my family also um, Muslim, and I was born also Muslim. And Alhamdulillah, in Malaysia, I got uh, like 70 or 60 percent is Muslim. And I came, I came here since I uh, came to South Africa since uh, 2010, uh, doing for Alim course. Then for final year, uh, by the in the Durban, by the commercial city, which which is teaching by the Mufti Fayyad. And, and also we got uh, here nine Malaysian here. Some people can't talk the, uh, English. I'm also don't know how to speak to English, but I learned. Then I come to I came here just to to know about IPCI. But sometimes I watch a video, but uh, which is Doctor Zakinek, and then I, I think. There is some may, must be some program uh, for this dawah. Then I found uh, is this IPCI. Then Alhamdulillah, uh, which is uh, what uh, I think about that. Allah choose choose me, and for others, my friend also come to join this program. Alhamdulillah, zakwa. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is uh, Adam bin Abdul Muttalib, original from Malaysia. I'm here for studying by Mufti Fayyaz, who is also my, with my friends. Uh, the cause of I'm joining this program is because I want to learn and I want to get more understanding about dawah, respect 
other's religion and get more facts about the truth about, about our Islam, about our religion. Jazakallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Muhammad Ashraf. I'm also from Malaysia and uh, same like my friends. Uh, we came here to learn in Jamia Faizul Ulum at Danakol and our last year we did in Durban. So next year is our last year. So uh, before we start the, the class there and uh, Mufti Fayyaz asked us to come here and join this course and we look after to join this course because uh, the opportunity is not uh, always come and we also can learn uh, skill and technique to give da'wah to people here and also in our country in Malaysia so uh, um, make apologies for my bad English and all my and students, uh, all my friends, uh, because we are not so fluent in English. Uh, because of that, some of my students, my friend didn't come here and speak. And I, I hope we can you can learn all things about here about this dawah training. And make doa for us and uh, help us. In anything that you can. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm a man who is 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 محمد المبعوث رحمة الورى وخير هاد لجميع من درى وبعد فالعلم بحور زاخرة لن يبلغ الكادح فيه آخرة لكن في أصوله تسهيلة لنيره فحرس تجر سبيلة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Ismail Qasim origin from Malawi When I was young, I used to wish if I could study, but the problem was school fees would not finish school. Then I was trying to get one of the boarding schools in Malawi, which is the combined of the school and madrasa, but unfortunately we did not get. Then I came here in South Africa to work. When I reached, Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me. I reached in a family where the whole family, they used to make five days salah. Then it was like my opportunity. I started making my salah. Then I used to make in one masjid, in one daru, which is a daru miu kase. Then I used to meet uh, some students. I made friendship with them. Then they used to ask me, you look so young, what are you doing right now? I used to tell them that I'm working. They, then they used to say, but why don't you just come here, start studying? Because they the madrasa is for free. Then in my mind, I used to think that maybe they paying money. But uh, because I used to, I, I had it still that uh, desire to study, then when I went back to the house I was living, I asked them to get for me the place in that school. Then uh, they tried, they told, them, they told them that there's no press to finish. Then they got for me in one madrasa. Then I went there. I started studying. I stopped working. Then Alhamdulillah, we learned today books, adab, 
One of them, we learned how to get the noise. <laughs> but uh, the only thing is that the noise no one can finish. But to try to gain something from there by inclining to it, you will get. Then the dua is that Allah must guide, guide us and put us in a those people who are sincere in doing action. Inshallah wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasuhil kareem amma ba' Wa qad qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Kareem Ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim Wa man ahsanu qawlan min man da'a ila Allahi wa amina salihan wa qala illani min al-Muslimin Wa qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Al-Dunya sijinu al-Mu'min wa jannatu al-Kafir Awa kama qala alayhi salatu wa sallam Ismi Abu Qatala bin Ghazali wa asli min Malaysia الآن أتعلم في مدرسة مفتي فياض الرحيم وأتعلم هذا الفن لأنني أحب هذا الفن ومقصود أتعلم هذا الفن لعدد كلمات الله سبحانه وتعالى ونجعل الإسلام كما إسلام في أحد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وآخر الكلام والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم اسمي محمد Haziq bin Syamsuddin Makna bin Malaysia Adusu fi manasah Ati Fayyaz Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh My name is Muhammad Abdul Saq I'm, I'm a student from Vazul Ulum I've heard a lot of A lot of talk about the uh, Ahmed Didad. That's why now I was looking forward to to start to start to know how to give da'wah to the kuffar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear students السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته only few of them, wa alaikum salam. Jazakallah. Our next section, next session is how important dawa is and how easy it is. How important dawa? Dawa means invitation. Dawa means for you. I am telling you, dawa means because you are new, you don't know the term dawa. Dawa means invitation, inviting people. How dawa is important and how easy it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Suratul Al Imran, Surah number 3, Ayat number 19, in the in the Lahil Islam. The religion before Allah is Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Suratul Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 85. Acha, this note will not be given to you. So better make short notes with you, Alhamdulillah. So I said, Allah mentions in Suratul Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19, in the Dina, in the Lahil Islam, the religion before Allah is Islam. Again, he mentions in Suratul Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 85. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Anyone who comes up with the religion other than Islam on the Day of Judgment, never will, be, never will it be accepted from him. If a person comes with another religion other than Islam on the Day of Judgment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before God Almighty, 
that religion will not be accepted and he will be in the hereafter among those who have lost. He will be a loser. Now I am asking, to, we know this fact that Islam is the only religion before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone knows that. No other religion will be accepted on the day of judgment. Everybody is aware of this fact. Everyone, everyone. So this fact is known by us. The Hindus, they don't know. The Christians, they don't know. The non-Muslims, they don't know. Only we Muslims know that Islam is the religion before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only we Muslims know that on the day of judgment, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to reject all other religions except only on Islam. Only we know. The non-Muslims, they don't. Do the non-Muslims know this? The Christians, they don't. The Christians, they don't know that Islam is the only religion. The Buddhists, they don't know. The Hindus, they don't know. The non-Muslims, they're not aware at all. So if we Muslims are only knowing this fact, then I'm asking whose responsibility is it to inform them? Whose responsibility? Tell me. It is our responsibility. We know that Allah SWT mentions in the Quran that Quran is for all. It is not for only Muslims. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185, شَهْرُ رَمْزَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدَلْ لِلنَّاسِ Ramzan is the month in which we have revealed the Quran and it is a guidance to all mankind. هُدَلْ لِلنَّاسِ Surah Al-Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 1, Allah SWT says, God says, أَلِفْ لَامْ رَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ لِتُخْرِجَ النَّاسَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُورِ أَلِفْ لَامْ رَا Book is revealed unto thee, O Muhammad, to lead mankind from the depths of darkness towards light. Lead mankind. Hudallin Nas. Surah Al-Ibrahim, Surah number 14, again, verse number 52, it says, Haza balagullin Nas. This is the message for all mankind. All mankind. Balagullin Nas. All mankind. But again, I say, this is known by only Muslims. That Quran is for all. The Christians, they don't know. Do the Christians know that Quran is for them also? The Christians don't know. The Hindus, they do, do they know the, Do they know that Quran is for them? The non-Muslims, they are not aware. They don't know about the fact that Quran is for them. So I'm asking again, who responsibility is it to inform them? It is our responsibility again. Again, we read in the Quran and we know this fact that Muhammad وسلم, is sent for all mankind. He is not sent for only the Arabs. He is not sent for the Indians or the Pakistani Muslims. He is sent for all mankind. Allah says in Surah Al-Anbiya, Surah number 21, verse number 107. We have not sent thee, O Muhammad, but as a mercy to all creatures, to all mankind, to all. To Alameen, to all creatures. In Surah Al-Araf, chapter 7, verse number 158, it says, Qul, ya inni Tell to all mankind, I am the messenger sent to you all. Jamia. Chapter 7, verse number 158. Chapter 21, verse number 107. Chapter 34, verse number 28. Several places we read that Muhammad Wasallam is sent for all. Again, I ask the same question. Do the non-Muslims know that Muhammad is sent for them also? Most non-Muslims, they don't know. The Christians, they don't know. The Hindus, they don't know. But here we read in the Quran and we know as, as a fact that Muhammad Wasallam is sent for all. Then again, I'm asking, whose responsibility is it to inform them? It is our responsibility. Now, is it that you only know, or all the Muslims know this fact? Alhamdulillah, each and every Muslim knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for all. Each and every Muslim knows that Quran is for all. Each and every Muslim know that Islam is the religion acceptable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other religion will be accepted. Everyone, every Muslim knows. But again, 
the responsibility lies with us to inform them but how many of us are involved in this how many of us fulfill this responsibility if i ask this question in this audience because i have asked this question to many audience and everywhere even if it is 10000 15000 many any audience i ask only few hands go up saying that i have i am involved i suppose i am asking the same question here and alhamdulillah i expect that all the hands will go up i expect the, all the hands will go up let's see what happened in the last week which has passed how many of you have attempted to call one non muslims towards islam one non muslim towards islam this is the audience where we should have every hands to go up but yet we have few hands only not 100% it is yet not 100% can you imagine if you ask this question to other audience in the juma khutba how many hand will go up in the juma khutba if you ask this question how many hand will go up everywhere i found only 3 4 hand few hands going up so majority of us we are not fulfilling uh, this duty majority of us majority of the muslims are not fulfilling this duty and this is very dangerous this is very dangerous in this context if you read this hadith of a prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in sunan tirmizi hadith number 2416 abdullah ibn masud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he narrates this hadith he says on the day of judgment man son of adam will not be able to move his two legs unless five questions are asked to him son of adam will not be able to move his two legs on the day of judgment unless five questions are asked to him first where did he spend his life second where did he spend his youth third from where he earned his wealth fourth where did he spend his wealth four questions are over fifth question is related to us fifth question how much did you implement what you knew and here we are caught on the day of judgment we know that allah subhanahu wa taala is for, is for all but we are not conveying the message we know that islam is for all but we are not conveying the message we know quran is for all but we are not conveying the message we know muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is for all but we are not conveying the message we are caught on the day of how much you implemented what you knew and we are caught again a dangerous situation i say because there is a hadith a beautiful hadith again in the bani israel the children of israel among them there was one person uh, there was a pe- there were people there where allah subhanahu wa taala asked jibril al islam gabriel to go and turn upside down the qariya turn up and down the town to give azab jibril al islam goes back to allah subhanahu wa taala gabriel he says oh allah there is a person who is an abid a very devout worshipper he commits no evil also he is not sinning also he is very devout worshipper should i punish those people along with him what allah subhanahu wa taala replies what did he reply go punish him along with him turn upside down the qariya turn upside down the town with the that devout worshipper along with him in another narration it says that start with him start giving punishment with this person start with him why allah subhanahu wa taala said start punishment with him why allah subhanahu wa taala said that punish that person also along with those people why what was what was the reason what was the fault of this person can anyone what was his fault yes he was only bothered about himself he was only concerned about his worship he was only concerned about his ibada he was not bothered about other people i am asking is this not the same situation of we muslims now today majority of us are concerned about our own ibadah our own salah 
our own Ramaz, our own Hajj. This is the same situation, isn't it? And it is a proof, it is demonstrated. If you ask this question, how many of you? Only a few hands go up. Majority of them, no. So this is a proof. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can punish that person, he will leave us. We are on the same firing line. We are on the same firing line. Allah does not look on your faces, on your color. Allah looks at your heart. So Allah is not partial. If he can punish that, he can punish you. And the situation today that we are living in this world, I believe this is the punishment. We are undergoing a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. And I visited last time in South Africa and some organization, relief organization which are working in South Africa, I happened to visit that organization. And that organization, the person who was responsible, he started speaking to me and he said, Doctor, what, what one thing I realized, throughout the world when we do relief work, we come to know that 90% victims are Muslims. Tsunami is there, storm is there, problem is there, but everywhere you find the 90% victims are Muslim. What is the matter? I said, I remember one hadith, let me relate to this. And it says, in, and this hadith is from, again, Sunan Tirmizi, chapter, Huzaifa uh, um, ibn Man, he narrates 2169, hadith number 2169, Huzaifa ibn Man, he narrates that Prophet Muhammad says, O oh people, do continue doing Amar bil Maruf an Nahi Anil Munkar. Keep calling people towards maruf, keep calling people towards good and forbid people from doing evil. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send punishment on you. He will send punishment on you. And you will seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will not answer your prayers. Allah will not accept your prayers. I related this hadith to this person and he said, you're right. So, dawah is a duty on us. It is a responsibility on us. We cannot forsake this. Now, at least now you realize that it is a duty and we should be, each and every one should be involved in it. Do you agree all? Alhamdulillah. Now, let me give you another story from the Quran. A story from the Quran which gives us a lesson Chapter 7, verse number 163, 164, 165, 166. Chapter 7, verse number 163 to 165. Four, five verses are there. And the story is regarding the children of Israel, Bani Israel. Here, this group of Jews, they were commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God not to fish on Sabbath day not to fish on Sabbath day. وَسْأَلْهُمْ أَنِ الْقَرْيَةَ أَلَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاذْرَةَ الْبَحْرِ Talk about those people who were living beside the river, river beside the water. إِذْ يَعْدُونَ فِي السَّبْتُ They transgressed in the matters of Sabbath. إِذْ تَعْتِيهُمْ حِيْتَانُهُمْ يَوْمَ سَبْتِهِمْ شُرَّعَ The fishes used to come on the day of Sabbath in large numbers, popping their heads above on the Sabbath day, on the on Saturday, they were coming in large numbers. On another, the days which was not Sabbath, it was not Saturday, no fish. This was the and Allah says, Nablu, we were examining them, we were testing them. Because they were given into transgressions. They were continuously committing sins. So Allah was testing them. God was testing them. The story is like this. The Jews were commanded not to fish on Sabbath day. But the Jews, they started fishing on the Sabbath day. They, they transgressed in the matter of Sabbath. What they did on the day of Sabbath, they did not fish. 
on the day before they used to place the net or something like that and keep it all along on the Sabbath, on the Sunday, they used to remove the fish. So this transgression they people did. The next verse says, وَقَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ And a people, a group of people, among them they say, لَمَا تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا Why are you, why are you warning these people? Allahu muhlikuhum aw muazdiuhum adaban shadida. Allah is going to punish them. Allah is going to kill them. Why you need to bother them? Why you need to inform them? Why you need to warn them? No need of warning them. Keep them as it is. Allah is going to punish them. Allah is going to kill them. Muhlikuhum aw muazdiuhum adaban shadida. So these people, they said, "Kalu mahadratan ila rabbikum." We are due, we are fulfilling a duty towards our Lord. Mahadratan ila rabbikum. Allah Allah kum yar jun. But chance they improve, they come back to the right path. So they repair. So looking into these two ayahs, two verses of the Quran, what we realize there were three types of three groups formed in this among the Jews. One group was given into transgression openly, right? Second group was calling, informing them, warning them, don't do this. This is wrong. Don't do this. They were warning them, calling towards righteousness. Third group of people, they were taking objection on those people. Why are you warning them? No need of warning them. Allah is going to punish them. Allah is going to kill them. No need of warning them. So there are three groups of people. One given into transgression. One warning those people not to go, not to do, calling towards righteousness. And the third group taking objection on these people who are warning these people. Who are doing righteous acts. Now, in next few verses, what you realize, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah saves only those type of people, only those, those people who are calling, who are warning them not to Sabbath, not to fish on the Sabbath day. Meaning those who are involved in dawah. So Allah saved only those people who are involved in dawah and he punished and made them dejected, despised apes. They were converted into apes. Monkey. So I am asking now, in which category we qualify? In which category we qualify? I hope we are not given into translation. We disqualify this group. Alhamdulillah. You agree? Alhamdulillah, we agree. We do not qualify with the transgression group who is transgressing into sin, who is fishing on the Sabbath day. We don't qualify with that because Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. We don't qualify with that. But do we qualify with those people who call through dawah, majority of us? We don't qualify for that also. So we are not qualifying for the saved group. So if we are not qualifying for the saved group, we fall in the third group. Most of us, we fall in the third group who are punished. So what we realize that dawah is important and compulsory on each and every one of us. We cannot afford to miss it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in several places, in Quran, several places, Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 104, Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 110, Surah Al-Nahal, chapter 16, verse number 125, several verses you will find where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs to do, involve himself in dawah. Kuntum khaira ummati nukhrijat linnaf, ta'muruna bil ma'rufi tanhawna lil munkar, and to minuna billah, invite, call people towards maruf, call people towards good and forbid people from evil and believe in Allah. 
Allah says in Surah Al-Aliman chapter 3 and 104 that there should be a band of people among you calling people towards right and forbidding people from evil. Allah says in Surah Al-Nahal chapter 16 verse number 125 Udu ila bil hikmah Call people towards your Lord with hikmah, with wisdom, with, with beautiful preaching and argue with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. There are plenty of verses in the Quran which is instructing you to call people towards righteousness. Call to, to people towards Maruf. And there are some, several hadiths like this, for example, in this Sahih Bukhari, hadith number 5200, it says, Every one is a shepherd and every one will be asked about his subordinate who, who is under him. Kullukum rain, wa kullukum masulin and rayatihi. Sahi Bukhari, hadith number 5200. Man is a rain. My man is responsible to his, to, for his own family. The wife is responsible for whole family except the husband. The king is responsible for his all riyaya, for all his subordinate subjects. So everyone is responsible and everyone will be questioned on the day of judgment about his, about those people under him. And another hadith in Sahih Muslim, hadith number 49, it says, Man ra'a minkum munkaran among you, among you, if anyone witnesses any evil, then change it with your hand. Fa'illam tastete. But if you cannot change it with your hand, then with your tongue, with your mouth. If you cannot change with your tongue, then with curse in your heart, and that is the lowest part of Iman. So, Alhamdulillah, we realize that it is our duty to convey the message of Islam to all. Now, there is no need to emphasize in this audience, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, this audience is already prepared for this, so no need to emphasize here. Let us emphasize on the aspect, how can we involve in Dawa? How can we start Dawa? And I said in the beginning that Dawa is easy. Dawa is easy. How many of you agree with me that Dawa is easy? Alhamdulillah. Good number, but... 50% they, they don't agree that Dawa is easy. Only 50%. And Alhamdulillah, after the program, everyone will agree Dawa is easy, inshallah. See, what problem you face when you think of Dawa? What is the obstacles? For example, if you Relate, tell me what is the obstacle, I can just deal with that. Otherwise, I will continue myself. In France, it will be difficult, but not all the countries. It depends on, from country to country, and Alhamdulillah. But here, we will try to suppose how to start Dawa. How to start Dawa. If uh, whatever we say and you can implement in France, you can implement. Otherwise, you can think of another way how to uh, convey the message of Islam to them. But everywhere, why, uh, what I find that People, they think, how can we start Dawa? Suppose you meet a person. You meet a Hindu, meet a Christian, meet a non-Muslim. How to start Dawa with this person? Every non-Muslim, he has something with him which is a sign that he is a non-Muslim. Every non-Muslim has something with him. For example, if I am meeting a Hindu, he is wearing a thread around his wrist. Or he's having a webmulan on his forehead. Or he's having a long churki hair left out. Churki here behind. Something, some sign is there. So what you have to do, you can just ask him, brother, please tell me about this thread that you're wearing around your wrist. You just ask him a question. Brother, please tell me why you're wearing this locket around your neck. Why you're putting this Vermilion on your head, marking on your head, forehead. What is the reason? You ask a simple question. And if you ask a question like this, he will not be offended. You are not attacking him. You are not speaking against him. You are just asking information from him about his, his own religion. 
and anybody asking about his own religion his religion everybody is prepared to tell you about his religion suppose if anyone asks you about your beard will you be angry with this person why is asking me this question no you will not be angry you will be happy to give the answer so he is asking about your clothing you will be not angry you will be happy to explain him why you are wearing this clothing in a similar way you if you happen to ask this person who is a hindu wearing a thread and i have asked several times and this is my habit if i am in a taxi or in a car seeing the driver having a statue in his taxi of a ganpati of a ganesh i will ask what is this can you tell me about this ganesh or this statue that you are worshiping do you worship this and he says yes so whenever you find a non muslim with a different sign a sign you can ask about himself and when you ask him he will start speaking once he starts speaking you have to be attentive and listening to this person what he is speaking and from there you will gather different points where you can dwell alhamdulillah now let us demonstrate one aspect of how we can deal with the hindu for example suppose i am asking this person why you are wearing this thread and he says this thread i had been to so and so temple and there the pujari after worshiping these idols pujari he tied the priest of that temple he tied a thread around them so some of the something like this he is going to say or even if he doesn't say that pujari has done he is give another story that my mother has put or i have put just like that nothing does mean even if he has says anything what you have to do you have to just ask him do you worship idols if he says that pujari has put then you, you ask him you which idol you are worshiping there so you make him accept you make him admit that he worships idols and every hindu worships idols most of them worship idols most of them the hindu you common hindu you find you will find the worshiping idols so ask him which idols you worship and he will give you list of idols he worships in temple at home he will give you list of idols so ask him what your scripture say about idol worship what your scripture say about idol worship and the most of the hindus the common hindus which you are meeting most of them will say that i don't know and they really don't know then i say which scripture is the most sacred one in among the, among the hindus which is the most highest most sacred scripture among the hindus and i have met many hindus common hindus they don't know which is the most sacred scripture among the hindus they are not aware then i say don't you agree that vedas rig veda sam veda atharva veda yajur veda these vedas are book most sacred book and moment i utter the word veda they all agree yes yes yes, yes. the veda veda is the book veda is the book so i say in yajur veda your most sacred book yajur veda chapter 40 verse number 9 it says andhatam pravashanti ya sambhuti mupaste those who worship nature they are entering deep ignorance of darkness those who worship the modified nature created nature they are entering further more in darkness those who worship nature they are entering in deep ignorance of darkness those who worship the modified nature created nature they are worshiping they are entering more depth of darkness deep ignorance of darkness they are entering more in the depth of darkness so i say according to your most sacred scripture you shouldn't do you should not do idol worship and he agrees yes according to this verse we should not do idol worship in the question when we ask which is the most sacred scripture they say sometimes bhagavad gita because bhagavad gita is well known this book among the hindus bhagavad gita now bhagavad gita is the book which is not the most sacred one it is the part of mahabharata mahabharata is the another book of hindus out of that 
from 18 chapter to 25 chapter certain chapters were taken out and made one book and that is Bhagavad Gita. So if a person says Bhagavad Gita or if he doesn't say Bhagavad Gita, remember one verse from Bhagavad Gita also. Bhagavad Gita chapter 10 verse number 3. Bhagavad Gita chapter 10 verse number 3. It says, Yo maam ajam anadim cha vetti loka maheshwaram that that God, whoever he is, he is unborn. He is unborn. And he is anadim. He has no beginning. He is unborn and he has no beginning. So I quote to them this verse from Bhagavad Gita which says that our God is not born. He is unborn and he has no beginning. If we take these two qualities he is unborn, he is not born, he didn't take birth and he has no beginning. All the idols are disqualified and he agrees to me, yes, all the idols are disqualified. He agrees to that. Once he agrees that <coughs> idol worship is wrong and that according to their scripture, own scripture, it is not established. Now you come forward and quote a verse from the Quran from Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 21 and 22. 21 and 22. And it says, Ya Yohannas, Ubudu Rabbakum Ladi Khalakakum, Waladina Min Kablikum, La Allakum Tatakun. O people, Allah says, O people, O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and created those before you. So I say, we should worship the one who created us. And if you say to non Muslims, we should worship the one who created us. And ask him, who, who do you think you created you? What reply you will get? Many times you will get a reply that my mother created me. My mother <laughs> gave me birth. My mother gave me birth. I asked this question to a Japanese when I was in Japan. I asked this driver, who, which I was traveling, I asked him, who do you think uh, created you? He says, my mother. My mother created me. So, if he, anyone says my mother, tell him that a carpenter, when he makes a chair, while making the chair, he doesn't he realize that he's making the legs now 